Good morning and happy Easter to everyone that's here. So nice to see all of you.
vibration in here today. Let's raise a vibration as we welcome the youth of East Bay Church of Religious Center. Let us welcome the youth today. for holding us all till we got here. We appreciate that. And thank you to Martin. Thank you to James. Thank you to you, as you have been holding the high watch. I tell people from the moment I got here, there was only one demand. Bring back the choir. <laughs> And I said, we're not bringing back the choir. We're bringing forward the choir. And it could not have happened with all those beautiful, happy voices that said yes. yes. <sighs> we're a little out of order today, but it's Easter. <laughs> I'm Reverend Dorica Blackman. I'm the senior minister here at the East Bay Church of Religious Science. And I got on my spring ball gown. <laughs> but the superstars of Easter are who? Our young people. So Reverend Arlene and I are going to make sure that we hear all these beautiful voices and uh, they're ready to go. So we'll, let's start with some introductions. Can you tell us your name? Um, I'm Alexandria. And how old are you? I'm 10. And who are your parents, Alexandria? Um, or um, Dorisa Chambers. Mm-hmm. Mom. Wave. Moms are important, too. <laughs> and can you tell us your name? Amira. Amira, and how old are you? Six. Six. And who did you come with today? And I, I think you know her already, don't you? Who is this? Who is this right here? Sister. Oh. Uh. And what's your name? Ali. Ali. And how old are you? Five. Five. And will you wait two? Can you wait? Nana. Yes. <laughs> And with the well-trained, sensitive ears. I'm Harper. How old are you? Six. Six. And who did you come with today? Mom. Where's mom? What's <laughs> your name? You don't have to tell us if you don't want to. You want to pass? We love you. We love you, yes. You want to wait? OK. Can, can I come back? Okay, I'm gonna go over there and come back. Okay, go ahead. You go? I'm Lala, and I came with my mom, and I'm 14, and she's over there in the choir. This is Akaya. Her mom couldn't be here with us today, but she's happy to be here, right? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. And you want to say something else? You good? Okay. Let's go see if we can bring this over here. And what's her name? Amira. Amira. And you have a parent here today? Who's with you? Uh, my mom dropped me off. Okay. Well, we're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Out in the mouths of babes. Whose mom is that? Whose mom is that? Oh, see, look, mom is here. Mom is right here. Mom is like, I'm right here. I love it. Mom is like, uh uh, I am right here supporting you. All right. Okay. Okay, and last but not least, this is Maria. She's 10, and she came with Arinthia. Okay. All right. 
Everyone looking this way? You ready? Take us. This is our invocation. Okay. God is in all, through all, and over all. God is in all, through all, and over all. God and I are one. God and I are one. I believe and I receive. I believe and I receive. I see what I believe. I see what I believe. I believe that God follows us wherever we go. I believe that God follows us wherever we go. I believe love is good. I believe love is good. I believe love is magical. I believe love is magical. I believe friendship is love. I believe in love. of something. I love my mom, but she hears that every day. I'm trying to think of something. Come back to me in probably like 10 seconds. <laughs> well, Maria has figured out hers. She says that God is good. And with that, We'll come back to you. Do you get something? We'll come back later. Come back. Uh, maybe not come back. I'll okay. Get. All right. It's okay. Listen, we have to tell our young people that it's okay for them to say no. There are some situations, and when it's okay to say what everybody else is doing is not what I'm doing. So let's finish up. Okay. I give thanks. I give thanks. I release and let go. I and so it is. And so it is. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Okay, now you can go back to your seat if you like. Can we acknowledge Fabiana Crenshaw, who helped put together our youth and family? Can I have everyone stand who teaches in our youth and family? All right, one, two, who else? Ever, right? All right. So, oh, yes. Oh, look. <laughs> okay, everybody say your name. Laura and Dr. Cynthia. Did I miss anybody? Oh, there's Deborah in the back. Miss Harriet, we said that. Okay, awesome. Another round for all of the folks who teach in youth and family. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to tell you who I am first. I've been up here for 30 minutes and you don't know my name. My name is Arlene King. I'm a licensed practitioner here, and I'm so happy to have you with us today. And at this time, I'd like to acknowledge our first time guests in the room and all those who are on virtual, in the virtual world. We want to stand if it's your first time here with us. Thank you. 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 And if you would just please continue to stand, we want to give you some East Bay love and recognition. Welcome to East Bay. We're so glad you're here. You're a gift to us, and we receive you in love. We appreciate you, and we thank God for you. Welcome.
So those are coming in, there's seats available in the front, on the right, if you want to come forward and have a seat. At this time, I'd like to go through our community announcements, which I can't see, but I'll, I'll, I'm just going to stand over here. Oh, yes, there we go. So today after service, we're celebrating Reverend Eloise's birthday. She should be with us later. Her birthday is actually tomorrow, but we're acknowledging her today. And we'll have refreshments and their cards for you to sign to give to her uh, back in the fellowship hall after service. So really, show everybody some love through your words and your presence. Thank you. This week's Power Hour, Reverend Dorica, you want to talk about this one? Because you got the power. <laughs> Very quickly, I'll just say that this Wednesday is the close of our season for peace and nonviolence. And so this is something we celebrate, and I asked if I could close it off with a conversation about love and justice that was inspired by the last page of the Four Pivots, which we read in February, um, and just the conversation that we've been continuing to have around sacred activism and what does it look like to be practicing love and justice. I actually want your participation, if you can join us online. I'm writing an article. I've been asked to write an article for our Science of Mind magazine. on this topic. So I would love to hear from you with your questions, your comments, what we should be focusing on. So come on Wednesday, it's the regular Power Hour information, and I thank you Wednesday night team for allowing me to celebrate the season in this way. Thank you, thank you Reverend Dorica. So April is tomorrow, and we're starting off our month of April with the theme, the power of prayer. You want to tag on this one? Okay. So the idea is that we inform, educate, remind ourselves the power of prayer. We'll be using the book. I'll turn it to you. <laughs> yeah. This is the book, uh, Ernest Holmes, Science of Mind, How to Pray Effectively from the Science of Mind. I've read this tons and tons being in school and just it's on my shelf. So we have them in the bookstore today. You can pick yours up, and Reverend E, Reverend E, yeah, Reverend E, Reverend Dorico will be speaking from this book this month. So, yes, amen. Next Sunday, okay, okay. We, we work on these together, so that's why we're kind of like, who are you going to do? I'm going to do it. So next Sunday, it will kick off the month and what a practitioner does, and some of our practitioners will come and talk about their experience and what they do as practitioners, what we do as practitioners. So those who are not aware will learn a little bit more about it. Very excited to have that in the service. Usually it's a workshop, but we're going to do it in service that Sunday. The 14th is Reverend E will be here with us, and we're going to talk about testimonies. How many people have a testimony? How many people have more than one testimony? Amen. So we're going to share our testimonies and hear Reverend E's testimony. So that should be an exciting Sunday. On the 21st, we'll talk about education, the path to practitioner. Um, some of you are always ask, how do I become a practitioner? We're going to talk about that a little bit along with the book. And finally, <laughs> this is how good this is becoming here. It's very interchangeable with Arlene and I these days. Um, I have had requests from folks. I would like to find a prayer partner. I have been blessed to have the same prayer partner for 12 years, and so we decided that we would have in this month that's dedicated to prayer an opportunity for you to find someone if you don't have one, and an opportunity for you to come with your prayer partner and celebrate. Yes, there you are, Lynn. I didn't see you. Lynn was like, when are we going to have prayer partner Sunday? So thank you for manifesting this for all of us. So April 28th, bring your prayer partner to church. And if you'd like to have a prayer partner, just someone, you can work out the schedule. If you can do every day, that's fine. If you want to do once a week, if you move when the Spirit fills you, you too will work that out. But we always talk about not leaving here without a prayer. What if you had someone who could hold that space for you all the time? How many people already have a prayer partner? Oh, yeah. So Prayer Partner Sunday, I expect to see you all April 28th. And let's focus on a whole month of praying. Yay. All right. So that's the book we're talking about. It's on the screen. It's in the bookstore. So Brother Tay-Tay, if you're familiar, will be with us 
familiar? Yeah. Want to learn more? Yeah. All right, he'll be with us the first weekend in May. Um, you can get your two-day workshop uh, ticket online now uh, at a, 50, uh, a discount through the 22nd of April. So QR code's there, and the information's on our website as well. Let's dance. Sister Linda, let's dance. Sister Linda's going to come and give us a brief overview of what's going on and things we can get excited about moving our body. Get excited. Let me hear it one more time. Come on. It is not a dance thon It is not competition. It is pure love. We're calling it the Eleganza, and it's 50 for 50. I was telling Arlene that uh, it's a fundraising for the church. So she wants to raise 50,000, right? She said that and more. So remember, as long as you have a, oh, sorry. She wasn't, you, she said it. You weren't here last week. That part, you can dance. It's open to the ministry here. It's open to elder women that are 70 something and above. And it's definitely, definitely open to people that cannot walk. So don't exclude yourselves, it's inclusive. And we've decided to call it the eleganza, which simply means elegant. So I'm asking that you bring your beauty. Raise your hand if you already signed up. That's only three people, that's a shame. What you laughing for, Reverend Anthony, you in? Okay, so, what? Look at Reverend Dorica. She in. Reverend E is in. Queen Michelle is in. Miss Vanessa's in. She don't know she in, but she in. Okay, so look, I don't have a lot of time up here, but I want you to know it's fun. That's all it is. We need to keep moving so that we can thrive and survive. So bring your tambourines, bring your voices. It's going to be done at the uh, California Ballroom. Come on, put your hands up and make some money for East Bay. Come on. Thank you so much. And again, if you have a gluteus maxima, you can dance. <laughs> All right, thank you, Sister Linda. I hope everybody's excited about the dancing. So here are our announcements for the week. You can find these all online. We're not gonna go through them, but they're available online. And this is a snapshot of what's happening here at East Bay for this week. So with great pleasure, I'm happy to turn the service over to our music ministry, led by Reverend Queen Michelle, Vanessa Wynn, musical voice extraordinaire, Martin Trousseau on drums, and Reverend James Jeffley on bass. East Bay Intergenerational Easter Mass Choir Extraordinaire. fabulous singers, and they just happen to be cousins. Yeah. And we have Zara Eagles and her cousin Maya Williams. And they're going to bring to you a song called Holy Hands. Holy Hands. you I am enough. Why? Because God made me enough. It's not every day I feel like it, but that's when I remember I am enough because God made me enough.
That was Zara and Maya. So we want to bless you with another offering. Wow! Oh, auntie, auntie, auntie! Y'all don't know. It's a blessing up in here today. So um, we have this song for you entitled Toward Our Wholeness. You're going to hear from Chris Hanif. And uh, I don't know what else is going to happen. I just know that I like this song. And it was reminiscent of a song that we used to do here back in the 1900s called uh, My Life is in Your Hand. So this is a, a, a new thought composer from East Coast named Reverend Greg Stamper, and I like his music because so let the, the song will speak for itself. Can you hear the knocking? Knocking at your door. Can you hear life calling? Calling you to more. Calling you to more. Open the door to life. Don't you be afraid. This is how your dreams come true. And how your life will change. Welcome them in. Welcome them in. They're angels, they're angels sent from beyond. All life, life. set it to movement. All of life, all of life, Can you hear the knocking? Don't you run away? Can you hear life calling? The call of our new day. Open the door to life. Don't you be afraid. This is how your dreams come true. How your life will change. Welcome them in. Welcome them in. Oh, they are angels. Oh, my. Set up to move, man. Oh, the life. Oh, the life. Set up to move, man. Even the challenges, they move you through. All right, oh, set up to move. Welcome them in. Welcome them in. It's a movement toward your wholeness. 
when it's hard, when it's challenging, on those days when you, you can't go on, all of life, say, all of life is for you. Yes, oh, oh, all of life is a movement. We're going to walk and say this part. We're going to leave and say, now I am living abundantly. Come on, choir. Living abundantly. Living in your favorite spirit. Free to be all me. Can you hear the knocking? Knocking at your door. Can you hear life calling you? Calling you to more. Open the door to life. Don't you be afraid. This is how your dreams come true. How your life will change. Welcome the men. Welcome the men. Oh, they're angels. All of life. Set it to move, man, towards your whole Yeah, there for your wholeness. Set it to move. Set it to move. Set it to move. I'm free to be me in any moment, at any time I can be me. I'm free. Abundantly. Say it to yourself. Now I am living abundantly. I mean, say it like you really mean it. Now I am living abundantly. Now I am living 
Chris Anif, Vanessa Wynn, Reverend James Jeffley, Martin Trousseau, our musical choir, inspirational caller audible, let her just do what she does, Reverend Queen Michelle. We had the East Bay Choir today with Zara and Maya. And where's the alchemist? Where's Chris? We had Chris. Um, we have more. There's a whole other thing that's happening. I just, God is working something out. Now. Right now. And, um, I just don't know what's going to happen when I come here on Sundays anymore. But I, I just want to say I feel you. And I know I talked to some of you that came in here with a lot of stuff. We're holding a lot of stuff. We got unexpressed grief. We got diagnoses. People we have to care for. We're looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> There's some constriction around finances for somebody in here. But you came to the right place. Because right here and now, it's people just moving in the spirit, ready to just resurrect. Today is the day when the stone was rolled away and somebody came there to mourn something that was broken beyond repair. I mean, he had nails in his hands, thorns in his side, but somebody came and said, I'm still going to pray right here anyway. That's you, sitting at the tomb, mourning. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to make it without this blessing. But it's not in there. He's not in there. There's nothing dead in our lives, in our consciousness. There's nothing dead because right now the stone is already moved away. You looking for what's broken and it's not in there. Nothing broken is in there. Nothing broken is at your job. Nothing broken in your relationship. Your child is not broken. It's risen. It's resurrected. This is a day for believers. Not in a book, in a consciousness. This consciousness says it's all available right here and now. Now, Imani came up here to read for the season for peace and nonviolence. It's not my turn, but I just want you to know. We're doing whatever God says. We're doing whatever spirit calls us to do. When the universe says, when the moon, why is Easter in March? Because the moon just came early and said, we're going to celebrate right now. It happens in conjunction with the spring. And here we are, spring and eternal, whenever spirit calls. They want to fix a day for Easter, but that's not what happens. It's when the spirit says, when the moon says, I'm shining full right now. That's you. Right now. When? When? Right now. You ready? Yeah. Okay, Zara, tell us, I mean, uh, Imani, tell us what you came to say, blessed beloved. <laughs> okay, so today is March 31st, which is the day of peace and also Easter. Um, the affirmation is, for the sake of my family, my community, for the sake of peace in the world, I make inner peace for my highest priority. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, this is the part where I'm supposed to get my talk. 
I just want to say Reverend E is here. Um, thank you. Uh, I cannot say it enough. We, we wouldn't be here. Some of y'all don't know Reverend E, but you still wouldn't be here. <laughs> this is forever the house that you built. And as we celebrate our 50th anniversary... We know that from the front door to the piano, you prayed all of this into being, including me standing here. And so, happy early birthday to you. We're going to celebrate you after service. We love you, and we thank God for you. You know, I was texting somebody like, I know she's coming, right? We got to celebrate. We're going to celebrate some more at the end. Um, I'm overwhelmed. I, uh, I want to say thank you. So many of you have reached out. Um, to celebrate my birthday and also let me just say celebrate the transition of my grandmother to being an ancestor. Um, this was the place. The deal is sealed. This was the place I came when it hurt the most. And I'm going to tell you as a leader throughout many times in my life that hasn't always been the case that I didn't come to the place where I thought I was supposed to be in the lead when I hurt the most. But this ministry here, this place called East Bay, it's a big container. And it's holding a lot right now. When I look around this room, I see so much testimony and so much joy. We've decided the whole month next month is going to be about prayer. Both the testimony of it the, the, the technology of how we do it in the science of mind. The pathway, for those of you who don't know that you're going to be practitioners going in the back and praying, all of us say, oh, no, not me. How many practitioners or ministers said, oh, I don't think I want to do that? Raise your hand. Yeah. So when you're like, I don't want to take the classes because I, I don't see myself becoming, yes, a practitioner is one who practices. I, I want everybody to be a practitioner. What's the point of coming here if you're not going to practice? <sighs> I've been thinking a little bit about the challenges of being in the pulpit. They tell you that it's going to be very lonely. That hasn't been my experience. I prayed so many months. Y'all know I applied for the job like a year before I took it. I prayed so many months for it to be easy. And people were like, Psh, that's not going to happen. Because <laughs> people come with stuff. Reverend, you used to tell me if you call yourself a healer, who you think going to come? I cried the first time she told me that. But it's been us together working through our stuff. And um, that's all you could ever ask for is uh, we're we working it out. Because it means that as more stuff comes, what are we going to do with it? We're going to work it out. Some of y'all are back to, the, to East Bay for a first time in a long time. And you walked in like, mm, I got stuff with East Bay. Some of y'all only been here five minutes, you already got stuff. <laughs> but there before the grace of God, go each and every one of us. Reverend, somebody told me the other day, they was complaining, Reverend, he said, they killed Jesus. <laughs> it's okay to die. That's what today is about. It's okay to die. Some parts of us have to die in order to be reborn. The question is, will you let it go? 
Will you let go the thing that's trying to let you go? That's all you have to do is meet God, not even halfway. Mustard seed. Just have an idea. Not that it can be different at some point in the future. Have an idea that the lack is a lie. That's the lie. I feel like Reverend Deborah. Thank God for Reverend Deborah, y'all. Last week was amazing. You know, Reverend Deborah channeled those letters in the sacred yes. And if you've known her and her ministry for a long time, sometimes she would channel them and they would come out of her in a different voice. And I just admired her so much for the willingness to just stand up and speak to people in a way that they might thought was weird. And so um, I'm just willing. And Reverend E thought I might never get there, didn't you? <laughs> that child loved to hear her own voice. She gave me a plaque one time that said, uh, speak the gospel, use words if necessary. <laughs> Which y'all can translate that, right? And um, I told, when we were praying in this morning before service, I told folks as I was researching, you know, I actually do a lot of research for these talks. I come up with like all the traditions and the pagan goddess Westra and all the ways that that inspired the term Easter and how we took away the divine feminine just to focus on the divine masculine. Now we got a father, a son, and a Holy Ghost, which in our minds is always male. A consciousness doesn't have a gender. That's why in this philosophy, we refer to God as it, because we're talking about a power, a power like freedom, a power like love. The metaphor, the parable of what Jesus is about is a consciousness that transcends death. It's a consciousness that transcends violence. It's a consciousness that transcends fear. It's a consciousness that transcends betrayal. I got a text message that somebody sent me of a, quote and it said G Judas ate too. Woo, we don't want that. Judas was blessed at the last supper. Jesus washed his feet. Judas was fed by Jesus even in the betrayal. The person who sent it to me said I can't comprehend such a thing and then I come upon the realization this is the important one. I'm Judas too. Because that's what's causing us so much pain, the part of ourselves that we can't forgive. That's the thing that has to die our own judgment because we judge others because we judge ourselves. And so if we're willing to let go of that recrimination, that negatively, we're so tough on ourselves. The inner conversation is like, this is why you ain't got nothing. This is why you ain't got nobody. The inner conversation is, I'm not ready. I'm not good enough. There's not enough. She got it instead of me. I don't know why. I don't know why. There's nothing to know. The stone is rolled away. What'd you say, Reverend? This is. Y'all want to hear from her. I know you do. Go on, say it again. I was raised in a traditional church where women were not supposed to preach. Mm -hmm. Ernestine Reams and I came out of the same church, and we left for the same reason. Amen. But the men who were disciples had gone back to doing what they were doing mm -hmm. before Jesus. But the women went up to the tomb, and they talked amongst themselves, saying, well, how are we going to put some 
frankincense on the body because they put a stone in front of the body. And a stone is very great. But they went in the house. They went, they knew it was a stone there, but when they got there, the stone was gone. And there was an angel, a, a voice that said, why seek ye the living amongst the dead? Go and tell them he has risen as he said. So that was my call to the ministry. Go down the road and catch the disciples and tell them it's already done. They call that tag teaming in ministry. I wanted to be transparent in that we all are teachers, but we're all students. My teacher is here. We don't have to have all this pomp and circumstance and ceremony. My teacher is here. Why would I not? Give her the microphone. And what I want you to know about that is you don't have to have all the answers if you're willing to let somebody help you. How many people need help? Okay, now if you don't have your hand up, it's time for some mirror work. But Reverend E is talking about the faith. The faith of people who showed up anyway. But she's also talking about the inspiration that God will give you a message. The angel is already trying to speak to you in your own voice, in your own head, in your own time right now. Speaking to you even now. Maybe it spoke in the song. Maybe it spoke in the reading. Maybe it spoke when I spoke, when Reverend E spoke, when the children spoke. It doesn't matter. Just listen. Listen for the angel that is saying to you, don't seek the living among the dead. Don't act like your good is limited by whatever you perceive as lack and limitation. Sister Linda said, if you got a posterior, you can dance. That's lack and limitation that's saying, oh, I can't because she said, come on in your wheelchair. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's our limited thinking that we are celebrating today. Easter is the overcoming of that. Easter is the fresh start. Easter is the rebirth. Easter is the opportunity to say that consciousness which, in, which was in Christ is where? It's where? The consciousness that was in who? Because that's not what we're taught in this society. We're taught to play small, yes? We're taught that we're not enough, that our problems are too big. Not today. Not today. The problems are not too big today. You came with all these people who sought to be healed. So now we're going to do the altar call. You know, the old church... You had to come up, the arms of the church are open. I'm going to ask all the practitioners to come forward first. Can I have all my practitioners and ministers just come here to the front? Yes, thank you. You come all the way over here. Come all the, come all the way across. Come all the way across. All the practitioners and ministers. Come all the way. Oh, Christine Schaefer is back. Hi, sister. Good to see you. Come on all the way across. Yeah. Spread out. Y'all, y'all, all the way over here. We can ready to pray for the whole con. Come on down, Arlene. We can ready to pray for the whole congregation. Yeah, bring Reverend E a chair. Here come Carol, who's about to lead the country. Spread out, y'all, down here, this way, all the way down here. Yep. Lucian, Reverend Lucian is here. Yeah, I'm going to call you that. Come on. So 
So we're going to do now what's called a chamber of prayer. So I want you to bring to your heart that which you're ready to release. If you're willing to be resurrected, if you're willing to seek your good right here among life, among the living, among the Christ consciousness, bring to your mind, what are you willing to let go today? What are you willing to let go today? What are you willing? Speak a word. What are you willing to let go? Just say it out loud. There's power in the word. Say it out loud. What are you willing to let go? Whether you said it or you just know it, there's only one of us. So we up here, we feel it. So I'm going to invite the practitioners to just speak a word of healing and transformation and light and resurrection for our whole congregation today. Together we pray. you just join with us as we release this word to the power of divine law, which knows the prayer that's in your heart and only has one answer. It only has one answer. It only ever has one answer. And that answer is yes, yes, yes. Whatever you spoke unto the Lord, whatever's in your heart, whatever you're willing to release, spirit says yes. And I just invite you to know this is true with just Practitioners are available to pray with you after service today. But first, we're going to have our time for gracious giving. Thank you, practitioners. Arlene. giving, I invite um, JJ to put the giving slide on and Zara will lead us in our affirmation. Hello. 
Hello. As I give thanks for the good now flowing into my life, I gladly share that good with others. The more I give, the more I receive. So it is. So at this time, it is our gracious giving. And I want to give thanks for all that we've received and what we continue to receive. But I do want to share our 50 and 50 with you. So if we could put the progress on the screen. Let's go to the next one. The next one's really big, a big story. So two weeks into our campaign, we're at $20,000 just about of our 50. <laughs> two weeks, two weeks. And we have 40, 40 something days to go. But I'm claiming we're gonna beat that and more. Yes? Yes? Yes. 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 So we are just lifting up and knowing what to be true. And I wanna invite you to enjoy Junior. And let me read his bio real quickly. Marcel Lilaba Coffee. Most people call him Junior. He plays with the new Apollo Youth Symphony. Has been playing for five years. His hope is to be playing today to bring peace and joy to all who hear him. He's saying Happy Easter, and he's playing the Sleeping Gothith from the Spring Valdali. Give it up for Junior. Thanks for Junior and his courage. So we just want to just pause for one minute just to bless our offering. Blessing the gift and the giver, knowing that all of our needs are met. And we heard earlier, we are abundant. So we're knowing that our abundance flows through the gifts and the giving today. And with that, I release my word. I allow it to be. And so it is. Do, do, do. Oh, yes, as the choir comes, we are holy, we are holy. Holy, holy, we are holy. Yes, and the youth are joining us. And Martin Trousseau is going to play the drums in a way that we will establish in the room the dancing in spirit. What's it called, Reverend uh, Sister Linda? The eleganza, so we can start now using our gluteus maximus to say, we are holy, we are holy, we are beauty, we are worthy, 
So however you do the gluteus maximus dance. Oh, let's say we, we are holy, we. You hear that drum? You hear that drum? Holy, holy, we are holy, yes. We are holy, we are holy. Yeah, holy, holy. Holy, holy, we are holy. We are beauty. We are beauty, we are. Are you singing, baby? Beauty, beauty, we are beauty, yes. We are beauty. We are beauty. ice cream and all that goes with a birthday connect with someone you can touch a hand an eye stare whatever just show that we were here together today and before I leave I want we leave I want to remind those who are visiting with us to complete your guest card we have practitioners who will come up and be available for prayer So affirm with me, I walk in the love of God. My walk is strong. My, walk is strong. My, head is, my head is held high. I know who I am. The Spirit of God is rising in me. So we leave here with our grand rising, giving thanks for this day. And so it is. So, Reverend E, you want to make your way down the aisle. Hold on, please. Let's let Reverend E get down the aisle. Reverend Dorica's down there. Reverend Anthony's down there. Reverend E and Reverend Dorica, make your way to dessert. It's good. They have these. Take these to the bookstore if you have not. Turn them in. Thank you. Have a great day. Holy, holy, holy. <laughs>